Welcome to my talk, the podcast series brought to you by ISS Market Intelligence. Thank you so much for tuning in. The focus of our discussions um, on my talk is the global retail financial services industry. Um, it's many segments, um, asset management, wealth management, life insurance, banking, fintech, uh, advice giving. Uh, we love it all. <laughs> for more than three decades, uh, we at ISS Market Intelligence and through our predecessor companies have been at the kind of uh, have had a front row seat to observe industry developments. And uh, we are passionate students of these businesses. So beyond uh, reporting on industry headlines, what we really want to accomplish with this, um, uh, with, with my talk, or with this podcast is to peek be behind or beneath the industry headlights, um, headlines and really think um, a bit more deeply, leverage our data sets and, and ask some questions about where things are going and how things are developing. We do this with the um, assistance of industry experts and thought leaders um, around the world. Uh, we do create new um, episodes monthly. So if you do enjoy this episode of my talk, remember to subscribe to our podcast on your preferred podcast platform. My name is Goshka Folda. I'm your host and Global Head of Research at ISS Market Intelligence. Uh, so for those of you who have been following the episodes this year, uh, we have been uh, on a bit of a whirlwind tour of the world. We we started in Canada, then uh, in the US, we talked um, uh, to our team in London. Then we took a, a real detour and went to Australia with our last uh, um, episode with Alex Dannen uh, at Rate Maker um, Media. And we're now back in North America. And uh, rather than taking just kind of a purely regional view, we're tackling a topic that actually is very near and dear to my heart. And that is a big question. Where are female advisors? Where are they? Um, we have recently uh, done some important research in terms of measuring the footprint that female advisors in, uh, uh, represent in Canada and the full service broker channel. So I thought this would be a, a great time to um, ask the, the, the lead researcher on this piece um, uh, uh, to join us and help us discuss what I think is an important, important industry topic. Uh, so, um, I have invited Vince Lindsley, who is Associate Director uh, at Investor Economics, ISS Market Intelligence. Vince uh, leads the team covering all distribution channels, wealth management in Canada. He has almost uh, 30 years of industry experience. So, you know, adding to all of us together, I think we're in multi-hundred, maybe in thousands of years of experience, hopefully quite not, maybe not quite, we're not quite as old. Um, but um, he's got vast experience at full service his broker channel and asset management side of the business. And when he's not analyzing uh, the investment industry, he spends his time driving his two kids across Toronto to watch them play hockey and soccer. And I know that they're pretty good uh, at both of those things. Um, I know a lot of tournaments are usually on his very busy uh, dance card, but he also enjoys playing jazz and rock guitar in his free time. Uh, welcome, Vince. Thank you very much, Kashka. Please be here. Thank you, Vince. So, thank you. So, um, let's let's maybe start uh, at at the very kind of baseline level, um, uh, and the, in a in an act of shameless promotion, I'll mention that we have just collabor collaborated with Globe Advisor on an uh, uh, piece, uh, an article that uh, they kindly featured on their site, um, uh, which uh, which I start with a with a question, you know why don't we have more female advisors? Um, so maybe let's start at that uh, kind of core idea. What are some of the impediments uh, to attracting more women to become advisors? Uh, great question. And um, I think, the, I mean, there's a number of things, uh, factors that uh, that we kind of were, were, uh, were, were talked about when in our many discussions. So we, we talked with firms pretty much the six big banks as well as five other independent firms across all channels. And uh, the big things that we came across, number one was around industry perception, which continues to be uh, still very male dominated, you know, built by men for men, 
uh, not welcoming to women. Uh, that you know, that ties into that. What came up a lot in these discussions, which really surprised me, uh, was around the, the the concerns and thoughts around maternity leaves. And how, when you're even planning your career, there was a lot of considerations around. Okay, is this the right business? And does this work? And does, especially when we're talking around a direct drive model and building a business, and especially one that's very competitive, uh, that came up a lot. The, the, so basically the compensation in the grid format. Um, and, and I would say a lack of awareness, even especially for a lot of uh, younger women. That was that was one of the big themes that, that came up that people didn't realize this was a career. You think about a lot of other things like real estate, for example, there seems to be no issue with uh, with women going into there. When, it becomes, when you think of becoming a full service advisor uh, on the brokerage side, but even or financial advisor, um, independent, it still seems to be traditionally male dominant dominated. And, um, you know, that, that was one of the, uh, the, the, the main themes that we, that we heard when we talked to uh, individuals across, across. And that seems to be something that's still slowly changing, but still definitely something that the, the industry as a whole needs to work on. I think in, in what we're hearing from a lot of uh, participants is that, you know, individual firms will try and make efforts and reach out. But as a whole, as an industry, we haven't done a good job of saying, you know, this is the, you know, we're welcome for women, we're welcome for business, like uh, open for business here. Like this is what you should be doing. So, yeah, I think that the uh, you know you're raising some really good points about the perception of the industry. Do you think that there is also a perception that you know, and certainly that 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 comment about the maternity leave, I think, is an interesting one because one would think that in 2023 we should be kind of past that, but uh, alas, this is still uh, kind of a comment, right, that we heard consistently from uh, the firms, right? Yeah, this was actually in it was it was in our previous report in 2015, and even still, we we heard of from a number of even women that we interviewed that were in the business that were like, yeah, I really had to sort of time my entry into this business. I just sort of say, okay, am I either going to do this well before I have kids when I've had a chance to build up a business, or I'll wait to have my kids and then I'll start it at 35, 40. By which point they might be like, ah, no, at this point I'm going to just stay where I am or not, or or look for another another career. So. As, as, a, as a guy, I was I, w- I would say I was surprised and maybe this is where the industry sometimes needs to really make sure that they're more aware and considerate of those and t- uh, those sort of, you know, the, the considerations that, that women have uh, that yes. maybe as guys that we're not thinking about. Yeah. And I think uh, your point is well taken. But I the other point that you made, which I find um I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really thinking it's important. It's also the, the, the awareness, the lack of general lack of awareness that yeah. there are, uh, that there are really good opportunities for, for women uh, yeah. with the right, you know, um, uh, uh, dynamism, dynamism, and, 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 and desire to build a, a successful business. In the, and this is just not something that we as an industry in general have been incredibly successful at propagating that message out there right no i i i would agree i mean we we when we were talking to participants the uh, the whole idea or the uh, you know the movie wolf of wall street came up which i don't i think you know is not reflective at all of the industry but there was obviously an element to that, certainly back in the 90s, and not to say that that people still sort of lean on as a as a perception, and and the fact that it's been male dominated, and there was a lot of you know, even when you looked at even uh, leadership, not just advisors, it was male dominated, and the the feedback we heard from from different people was you know, as a woman going into that environment, just even coming in for an interview, looking around, going. I'm not sure if I'm going to fit in here, um, and it, and that's that's why I think the industry has made a lot of efforts to change that. Certainly, one of the things that we came across was around the uh, the number of branch managers that has been um, that has been increased uh, substantially since our previous report. I think we've seen about a hundred percent increase in that number, up to about thirty percent. Whereas before, especially the big six, it was around eleven uh, percent branch managers, and now so I think. It's, it's changing. So I think it's, you know, it's steps like that, that they're realizing, okay, we've got to, we've got to take more than just, you know, trying to actively recruit. What else can we do around the, um, the branch environment to, to sort of cater to and, and attract more, more women into the field? 
Yeah, so I think that the, uh, the encouraging part of the research that you just mentioned, so there is some progress. Can you just kind of maybe give us some facts about, uh, I think you mentioned the women and branch managers, so that's up to 30%, which is yeah. uh, up from, what, 15%, right? Or was it, or yeah, um, yeah. something it was, like yeah, that, Yeah, it was right? about 15, and uh, yeah, and actually, the, uh, surprisingly, on the big six, it was underrepresented, but they've obviously made a lot of efforts over the last seven mm -hmm. years since we did our previous report mm -hmm. to uh, to promote and, um, and hire, in, hire a lot more women into the, the branch um, network. Other uh, things, I mean, I, I, I remember being working in the brokerage industry in the 90s and where I was in a branch and we were trying, the branch manager, the member at the time saying, okay, we, we need to recruit more women. He was just having a hard time. And I feel like they were kind of like, we don't know what else to do. So, um, which obviously, over time, there, there's, there's been some learnings. So uh, the branch managers being one, awareness. They're, they're trying to make more efforts at a university level. Like let's, 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 let's uh, go and go to these program or go to these schools, recruit. Now we know that a lot of advisors aren't recruited directly out of university, but it's more around just raising awareness that there are opportunities that uh, there, and and that could lead to hey maybe not necessarily becoming a full service brokerage advisor right away, but maybe working in in um, financial services to begin with who knows maybe becoming a branch uh, working at one of the banks potentially and then deciding to make the move um that's one of the things we've said we've heard firms starting programs around um buying books financing making it easier for uh for women and men to to start in this business which has become a lot a lot harder over the last certainly 10 years and 20 years um from what it was previously as well as teaming you know, ideas around, okay, maybe we, we can bring women into advisor teams, existing teams or promote one of the, one of the individuals, a former uh, IA that I spoke to said, you know, I'm amazed like the, the, the amount of, of qualified and capable associates that are already within branches. And we already know that associates uh, are predominantly women and doing a lot of the, the roles of an advisor, just they've never really been tapped into. And I don't know if that's, you know, Maybe some of them never felt, oh, I can really make that step forward because it's, you know, male dominated or the or the organizations just haven't done a great job of promoting and saying, hey, there's an opportunity for you here instead of uh, potentially saying, hey, you're good at this. Let's leave you here. And maybe not. We don't need to worry about it. But now they are actively trying to do this. And I would I would say one of the like the positive signs, uh, just the fact when we when we started this research, the amount of firms that were eager to get on board and wanted to know and, and, and question and give us information and, and, and uh, just obviously are very motivated to, uh, to do all this. And we know part of that is driven by the fact there's an estimated 4 trillion in wealth that women are going to set to inherit. And um, as women live longer, typically marry younger. So there's gonna be a lot, of, a lot of women as their husbands pass on that are gonna be suddenly in control of the finances. And we also know that the other stats show us about 70% of those women, if they are may be leaving their current advisor, especially one that maybe not has paid, paid as much attention to them. So I think firms are recognizing the risks and saying, okay, we gotta prepare ourselves for that. One of the other things that, that came up which was interesting and they not just tied to women but just diversity in general i think they said you know well we've got to have teams that are reflective of our, our changing clientele so we've just got to make sure that we have not just the same thing over uh, uh, across all of our you know typical what we normally see traditional a white male advisor they're like okay we've got to have different different diversity um greater diversity ac across all of the uh our, our channel so that was something like that we saw that obviously they're aware of sometimes it's hard to get there certainly quickly so um i think it's just that's just one of the challenges i think sometimes that's really what it is it's really around how fast and how dramatic of a change can you make so that's uh what what, what we're hearing a lot in our discussions yes i think that's very interesting and i think you you raised the important topic of of the kind of overall demographic um makeup of the Canadian population, which also has something to do with the demographics of advisors, which we know it's aging. So maybe yeah. uh, there is also a moment in the next five to 10 years where some of those 
older advisors kind of sail into the retirement sunset and then actually the female associates are going to step into the role. So we hope, and then you connected that. I think that's a powerful point. It doesn't, it doesn't always go that, that a female investor has to be serviced by a female advisor. No. There's nothing, no. nothing to say that, but I think there is, uh, you know, the comments that, that I have also heard and and that you you the team has shared with me is that that certainly there are you know female investors do not want to uh, uh, do not want a replica uh, of of the the male head of household relationship they want to be considered uh, you know as 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 fully capable and maybe with 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 divergent needs and the last point that I I thought that that was important to make is that of course and you you mentioned the fact um, that that um, uh, uh, you know marriages are established later. Well, it is the fact that Canadian society is powerfully becoming a single person household society. So yeah. there are many, many more single person households for a lot longer and sometimes for life. And because of that, uh, I think the offer to female investors is is of critical critical importance. Yes, and I think that's what we, that's what we're uh, hearing as well from all the firms. And like I said, I remember hearing this back. 25 years ago and now i think more of it's become more of an alarming call going okay we now we really got to get on it and i mean i think that ties to just some other themes that that have been happening i guess o- overall certainly within hr departments and uh, around diversity and it's just now really being applied um a lot more aggressively i guess uh, with, within the industry which which is um a good thing um, I, I mean, there's still obviously work to be done. I think the interesting thing ab- about that what we heard was really around um, there were some firms that don't necessarily agree with 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 everything with the same approach. It's not it's not universal in how they're going to apply these rules and um, whether so I guess you want to say the, uh, the the speed at which they're going to apply some of them. There were firms we talked to who said, you know, we're fine. We build diversity into within our culture and um, we don't need to do anything special um, because it's ingrained within what we do. So we don't need to do like have a, a you know, special program, a, you know, um, whether you want to call it a mentorship group or any initiatives to buy books, which was interesting because they looked at it almost as a competitive advantage because they said some of those firms are just still living in the dark ages. So we don't want to, we don't want to share with them. This is going to work for us. And so naturally, and one of those firms actually had much higher rates than, than the average. So, you know, it was working for them. One of the things that we did hear though from firms was that it would be better if this was sort of a universal message. And the fact that firms sometimes operate independently and the silos doing this, they go, this would be great if somehow we could unite as an industry and say, you know, we're trying to attract more women. This is this is a great opportunity, a great, you know, a great role potentially. Um, and so uh, th- that was one of the things that sort of, I want to say contradicted, but you're, you're hearing both, both people are trying, but sometimes they're all trying individually and it's not necessarily as effective as everyone did it as a whole together. I think that's a really powerful thought because, and and hopefully, and you know, and uh, we we do try with our research also to serve the the the, the greater society uh, good, uh, and hopefully, part of this research will will help firms almost align in in just kind of evaluating where we are. So let's let's get get to that point can you tell us like what is uh, what progress in terms of the 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 component i you talked a little bit about the branch advisors but so women in in some some uh leadership positions within the full service brokerage industry in canada but what about kind of frontline advisors what what's that percentage sure how much that has changed and what do you think are are the targets and what's realistic Great, great question. Um, overall, so when we did our previous report back in 2015, we uh, it was around 15 percent the number of, of percentage of women that were in the uh, that were advisors. I think it was something like 14.7, rounded up to 15. Now we're slightly over 18, so 18.2. So you know, it would say a very modest increase of about three percent. Uh, and you know, what the way we look at that is that is that is that success? Is that not success? I think you have to couple that. I mean, it obviously is kind of marginal. Um, I'm sure most firms 
that we've talked to would love to see much higher numbers than that. The, uh, the in, we saw targets when we when we were speaking to firms, they ranged. So some were saying realistically, we're looking at 25 to 30 over the next 10 years. Some were much more aggressive and said we're we're going to get to 50 in five years. I think that is quite aggressive. I think that the reality is just with the turnover that happens in the industry. Funny enough, one of the comments we heard was that a lot of the men in the, the uh, in the business tend not to retire <laughs> that that yeah that early. They still stay within the business and don't pass it on. There are many advisors they talked about in their 70s and 80s that were still coming in and still wow. hadn't yeah. fully given on the given on their books. So um, th those are the like things that I think. Well, it might take longer than we think. But with that said, you know, we uh, I, I think realistically, I think we're on pace for around 23 percent, 25. But maybe with a few more initiatives, I guess, if you want to say, if firms maybe adopt some of these programs around helping younger and newer advisors build books um, and and maybe even do some more teaming, uh, trying to make sure we have diverse and representative teams that can probably go up to 30, 40. 50 may be a challenge, at least in the short term. But when we look at for like, you know, when we look at businesses, I'm going to say similar type roles, like in real estate, if you're a real estate agent, that's over 60 percent. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Women. And so that's why, you know, funny enough, when people talk about the role, we used to hear, oh, well, maybe because it's a sales job, women aren't interested in it. But when we look at different roles, that, like I said, whether you're a financial advisor within a bank, which is not necessarily pure commission driven, that's, you know, over a, a, about the parity there. And then with real estate, you have about uh, 60%. So I don't think that's necessarily determined. What we did hear from, from people was that that real estate offers, I guess, some of the flexibility. And maybe this is something about raising awareness because I think they think, oh, even if I have, even if I decide I want to have children, I can still work around that with as a real estate agent and book appointments at night or around times. Full service brokerage is more of a nine to five gig, which as we're hearing, there's actually a lot more flexibility than people think within the within the channel, especially since the pandemic and working remotely. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of things now that have been that have been changing that we probably we just need to increase the amount of awareness on there. So. Well, Vince, um, thank you. This is, you know, clearly an important topic. And um, I would you just mention the, that, uh, you know, once the business is established, there's great flexibility. It's a great career, having had the great pleasure to meet a lot of, and the, you and I have met many different female advisors, extremely yeah. successful um, and uh, with great careers and great insights and contributing to society at large, to their communities and to their own businesses. I agree with you. This is a career that many females should 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 take a look at, and we need to work together as an industry, as a and as industry observers, we will support the industry in bringing these messages to the to the broader public and certainly to to young uh, women and and women uh, looking for second career and doing something different. Um, uh, certainly, something very important. And to your point, uh, you know, you mentioned advice advisors not not retiring until they're in their 80s i feel i'm going to be like one of those uh you know uh <laughs> students of the business uh, uh still in my 80s uh, noodling on the topics about the financial services business but a lot of people will probably say like go away um so vince listen thank you so much uh, this was really really this is really exciting research again very uh very close to my heart and and i I, I know um, the hundreds of hours that your team has compiled in terms of interviewing various industry players um, uh, and the kind of uh, organizations that are supportive of this topic. Thank you very much, Vince, for that. Oh, you're um, welcome. And uh, if I can summarize in one sentence, which I like to do, is like girl power, and we need more women <laughs> in this business. Uh, it's an important topic. Uh, we will have to continue to monitor that in, in a future episode. And you also mentioned the bigger topic of the diversity and inclusion. I think 
a huge important thing as we think about how the investment uh, in investor audience is changing, uh, very diverse, uh, you know, uh, ethnically and uh, and gender wise, and uh, and uh, we need to make sure that uh, over over time the advisor community resembles. Um, that uh, very uh, diverse um, uh, uh, demographic mosaic that that is Canada itself. So um, that is a wrap for us in July. Uh, in our next episode, we will have a great and illustrious uh, industry guest from uh, 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 from the U.S. Um, uh, so please join for uh, join us for that episode in August. As always, I encourage every uh, every one of you listening to this podcast to ping us about ideas on topics that you would like uh, to learn more about uh, and uh, would like for us to tackle in future um, episodes. Um, in the meantime, thank you for listening. And on behalf of IRSS Market Intelligence, I wish you um, a great remainder of the summer. Let's hope that it lasts as long as it possibly can, because we all love summer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.